uh, Luke's mixing and mastering and production I think is more on a pop and dance level on that side of things whereas Baker will do better with hip hop yeah. R&B R&B um, Afro which one is your favorite though? Which, which one is my favorite? Which, which one of the this is your favorite? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> I've played the fifth <laughs> Yeah. Are you guys good? Yeah. To be honest, I just yeah. like the way you guys look. The, like the whole fashion, the red cap, the glasses looks crazy, amazing. I can tell that you guys are like super creatives. You Thank know, you. just speaking about the style. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure about it. Yeah. And I want to hear from you guys. I was the creative journey being for you guys, starting with you, Chase William. Um, shit, bro. I mean, you. I don't think you you choose this thing. Um that you have going for yourself. I don't think you choose it. I think it's just uh, naturally a part of you. Like you always, if let's say uh, you have a dope fashion sense, you always have that. Like you, you actually realize that from a child, you're doing um, stupid things with clothing you're that right. maybe nobody else is doing or um, maybe everyone's doing it. Maybe you just like being on trend with things that are happening right now, but um, that's clothing wise but creatively musically if we're gonna talk music um that's been a, a roller coaster bro oh yeah that shit is crazy i'm allowed to swear right okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess i guess i guess <laughs> no i just had to make sure um so yeah that shit's been crazy bro because i mean you start out you have little to no support like mm -hmm. some people actually have nobody you know and um, for me it was a case of I was um, coming over from being a dancer into being a rapper first yeah so I came from a dancer into a rapper and for the dance community to accept that for me like leaving them basically because you know, like, yeah you yeah. build a, a relationship with the entire community because Cape Town dance hip-hop dance community is very small we all know each other so once you like step out of that it's very difficult for them to initially give support but they do give support once they can see that like you know what he's actually really he has something uh, he has something going so um, yeah in the beginning was tough okay but, but saying, saying that you actually left the dance to go to hip hop are you sure you left the dance because I, I checked the I checked the last few that you posted yeah the dance was crazy I was like damn man this guy been dancing so like, <laughs> yeah. yeah I think it was just the that you left I don't I don't feel like you left it you know just like a, nah I don't like, think I don't think I ever left it to be honest with you I feel like it, it will always be something that's a part of me because that's my first love yeah the end of like, story you got it man like, you yeah for sure so I still dance to this day. I still like try and go to dance classes as much as I can. Like mm -hmm. if any of my friends are shooting a video and they maybe want me in it, I'll still pull up and I'll do it. Um, but I'm not entirely focused on it. I'm not like fully involved in the dance scene anymore, but I still dance and still. I can still dance, yeah. Ah, amazing. Um, what, oh, free flow. I want to know, how's your, how's your creativity process like? Uh, like this uh, music and anything else? something speaks to me something like you know like 
something just sounds good to me and I feel like I can add something to it, then I don't know what happens naturally. You know what I'm saying? It never feels forced. You know what I'm saying? If it feels, if it feels forced, then I normally just let it go because it's like it's not worth it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And obviously working in Chase is only like boosted like levels. You know what I'm saying? But Speaking of creativity and, and music, do you guys think that uh, it's necessary to like mix creativity with business? Let's like in terms of music, do you think business and creativity is like works together in this? Yo, music? Of course, of course. And th- look, you can have the best music in the world, bro, but mm-hmm. if your business side is not sorted out, then you're going nowhere. You so what do, you, what do you think, um, how, how does the creativity comes into business? In what terms your opinion, of what? Based, on, based on music. In terms of, okay, so what you're asking is, how does one take music and put it into business in order for it to, yeah, like to do something. Um, yeah, that's actually quite a tough question. I mean, there's a lot of different business aspects within the music industry. So um, I think just to educate yourself on um, more so where you can uh, get your stuff released from and published from, how you can make sure that it's fully there. But first of all, get an artist registration so you have that number. Make sure that when you're doing your releases, you actually um, uh, making sure you have an ISRC code. You have, bro, the business side is actually the side that I don't like at all. So I have my manager just try and sort that out and I just stick to the creative side. I don't like. You know, um, I you don't know. like the business side of things at all. But uh, okay, I want to ask people this: do you, do you think, as an as an artist, like especially upcoming artist, do you think is it necessary to actually know the business side, or do you think it's like, oh yeah, I can just be an artist. I don't need the business. A thousand percent, bro. Because if you're not like in tune with like the business side of things, that's essentially just going to be like a hobby of yours. Like what we trying to do is incentivize in our creativity. That's what we're trying to do. And you can't do that without knowing the business side of things. Like, you need to either, like, drop something so good and, like, that it just blows up and then people, like, want to come help you with those types of things. Yeah. Or, like, you need to do it yourself. You know, you need to, yeah. like you said, they just uh, get all of these things. Um, and then also on top of that, have quality product. You know what I'm saying? You can't have, like, bad quality stuff and expect it to just, like, do numbers. You know what I'm saying? So you have to have good quality product. Then you need to know how to like market that product. Um, so yeah, I think it plays hand in hand. And if you don't know the one, the other's just gonna be like, oh, hobby. You're not gonna really get anything from. It. You're just gonna get like maybe no in the seats. Like you walk in and you're like, oh shit, that's yeah. cool. I mean that's that. But you're not gonna get like on the bigger scale. You're not gonna be hood famous. But you're not gonna be like radio playlists. You're not gonna like. You're not actually gonna be getting out of it what you actually want, which is at the end of the day, money to support yourself and to support your craft. And- you know, yeah. that's I, I don't I don't know. For me, I, f- I feel like it's very necessary to actually know the, the business side. Yeah. Because you know, if you look like the, the way things are involved today, I feel like any artist, they can actually make it on their own without being on any like, yeah. label. Yeah. Because back yeah, in the course. day, it was like, you need to be in the, like, in the label so you yeah. sort of like, they'll do the business and they'll yeah. help you with publishing and all this stuff. Yeah. For me, I feel like as, as an artist, you should be able to like, check the business. No, it is. It, I, I fully agree. Like, learn it for yourself first. Mm-hmm. Make sure you go through all the necessary steps. Make sure you actually understand the business side of things. So do it all yourself first. And then you can get somebody or or if somebody comes to you, then you can hand it over to that person and say, okay, you do this, you do that side of things, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just be the artist and just be creative. But you know that if you go and you sit down, if um, there's a potential meeting with a label Mm -hmm. and you go and you sit down with them, you know they can't mess with you because you know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, Yeah, so tell, Tell me, what's, what's, what's your main inspiration into the music industry? Yeah, that's a big one. That is a massive question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can take your time. Guys. Yeah, yeah, you that, is a, that, <laughs> that is a... It, look, I feel, like, I feel like I draw inspiration from everything. Everything. Yeah, it's, it's like I can't say one specific thing is... 
I, I don't even have a biggest inspiration or even people even ask me okay uh, who, who inspires who inspires you as an artist like who, who do you look up to you know and I can't say one specific person mm -hmm. there's so many different people that I listen to there's so many different um, aspects and um, avenues that I draw inspiration from that um, it, it comes out in my music and you'll feel it in my music. You'll be like, okay, wow, this guy can now talk about fucking sitting on his head for one, for 10 minutes. Or he can talk about uh, a bitch sitting on his head yeah, for 10 minutes. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but you know what I'm saying, man? I just... To different uh, feelings and different, you know, mm -hmm. situations. So um, you'll hear in my music that it's not just um, one lane. Um, it's the whole city's roads. Oh, you feel yeah. me? Yeah, it's all the roads. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, on your free flow, uh, uh, I want actually want to ask you this: What do you what do you enjoy the most when you're actually making music? Yo, honestly. The writing process, I feel like, could potentially become tedious if you you working with people that you don't blend with. But like the best part of the music making, like like how can I say journey mm -hmm. or that like occasion is when we have something like we we, we actually figure something out that we know is gonna hit, mm -hmm. and then we like turn up like you know what I'm saying like. Oh, really? Like, how do you know that this this is actually gonna hit? I don't know, it's just something you that just you know, you know it's just something that you know. Like if you hear a beat and you're like, okay, you may be someone, let's just say the way we make music is we hear a beat that we might like and then someone might just say something that's cool. And then you're like, okay. Then you add to it and then you keep building in your head and then like you feel like you have something and then you say it and then the person's like, What? That's hard. Do you, do you think that has to do with uh, being confident or you just like Bro, if you're not if you're not confident, then nothing you're not gonna get anything. Confidence is key, bro. I feel like I feel like I'm very confident. But like, if you don't have confidence, you're not gonna be able to actually like put yourself out there like that. You know what I'm saying? Be able to be be put on the spot or give your mic and I have to perform to ten thousand people. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you must be able to do those things because you don't know as much as that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I will perform the same way to ten people that I would do 10,000 people. You're gonna give it like you're all every single time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the, the best part of the music making process is knowing that, okay, we got one, we got something. And then build and build it. And then obviously the end product when we like chilling, drinking, and then and we put it and then everybody's like, it up, you know, 500 times. Okay, um, actually when I checked that, when I checked your performance when you were dancing, I was like, this is really cool and what came to my mind is, I want to know, if you ever like had a worst performance since you started with your music? Yo, <laughs> yo, um, I ha I've had bad performances, I've had mid performances and I've had great performances. So you said bad performance would be so much, eh? I, I've had a few bad performances, but I think that's more... Hey. <laughs> yeah, like I think that's more so just um, feeling let down by or discouraged by the lack of support or the crowd. amount of people and the crowd interaction. So I'd say my bad performances were more back when I was starting out and then I learned how to work with these people. The okay. crowd, any crowd, you can give them to me and I'll make sure that everybody will be here and they will be hyped. So you, you um, I, how did you get out of that? Because I know like when you when you perform and you sort of like get that, like I didn't do too cool, people didn't like this, and yeah. you, feel like, you feel down, right? Yeah. It happens a lot. And how do you like get out of that? Like You just make sure you fuck it up the next time. You go back home and you fucking perform to yourself in the mirror. So you prep this time you actually mm -hmm. prepare so now you go you're like okay why didn't this work out okay it didn't work out because of that so now i'm gonna do this differently i'm gonna go i'm gonna stand in the mirror i'm gonna even recite to myself in my mind what i'm gonna say as i walk onto the stage my first words what are they gonna be you put yourself in different scenarios and you make sure that you you have a specific something for each one of those so mm -hmm. you'll never lose your feet yeah, yeah. you always prep Nah, that's that's cool. how it works. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh yeah, I think so. Um, free free flow, right? Yeah. Um, what what has been the most useful skills to your music? Yo, honestly, I think it's just like my ability to to rap. I feel like my ability to write um, and kind of draw inspiration from, like you said, everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not just having like a smart way to portray words. It's almost like a painter painting a picture. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're doing. But like sonically, that's what we're doing. I can paint a good verbal picture with my words. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that well, bro, that's that's just been pivotal for me personally. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Oh, amazing, man. Uh, yeah, we're actually going to go on a quick break. But before we go on a break, I got one more question. No, not a question, actually. I want, to, I, want you, I, I want you to speak about your song, Make Up Your Mind. Because yeah, mm -hmm. the first time when I listened to the song, I was like, my mind was just like, shit, this is actually cool. Yeah. Oh, sorry for the shit, but that's like, <laughs> shit. The song was cool, though. I was like, jeez, how do you make something like this? And, and I actually like the beat, and the yeah. way you, 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 you flow with the beat. It was like, this, this, this nigga got it, you know, yeah. you already got it. So, I don't know, what was the inspiration behind that? Um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, like, Why did you manage to make something so clean and so good? So, I had, uh, I booked myself out to a place for like three days. Mm -hmm. um, me and another two producers, so that I can work on some music, like just by myself with them. Um, and usually in the evenings, if I'm having sessions, I'll drink a little bit, right? So I have my thing, okay. whatever. Or drink water. Yeah, absolutely not. Not water. No water. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink a little bit. So the first night I got a little bit turned. Oh. I didn't make anything at all. I woke up really early in the morning, like probably, let's say, okay, really early for me is like 8 o'clock. That's very early. It, uh, to me, that's very early. Okay. You know what I mean. Yeah. So, woke up eight o'clock, um, and I went to the one producer, and I was like, "Look, I have this idea um, of a style that I want to try out." Uh, this was a, make up your mind was actually an experiment for me because I hadn't made something in this sound before. It's this is like a R and B slash yeah. pop yeah. slash hip hop type exactly. situation. Exactly. It's, exactly. it's not how I usually make music. So. Yeah. I was like, okay, I have this idea, let's run this by. So what I usually do is um, when I'm working with producers, I will executive produce most of the records. So I will say, okay, I want the 808 pattern to go boom, boom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. That's how I want it. And I want, uh, I'll tell him I want higher, lower, I want the hats to sound like this, quarter, half, whatever. However, um, then I'll only get into the writing process afterwards. Once the beat has a, a nice structure for me, uh -huh. then I'll get into the writing. And um, I only had one thing in my head was can't decide, which is the first lyrics of the song. Because I felt that the night before, I was like, I can't decide what to make. I'm like all over the place. So I had those two words, can't mm -hmm. decide. And then I decided to take it in a different direction and speak about a girl who is indecisive in a way in how she like approaches me and what she wants from me i don't know what she wants yeah. you know you know you've seen those memes where uh, there's a specific meme from the notebook where that guy's asking the girl like what do you want what do you want what do you want the whole time he's like what do you want yeah so that's the that's where i got the inspiration for the song nah, from crazy yeah. man that's crazy yeah bro. and it, we knocked it out in like an hour nah, after nah, that yeah. that song is hard yeah man. That song, oh, i gotta do it shut up appreciate it that song is hard <laughs> that song is hard but um yeah so we're gonna go on a quick break and we'll be back <laughs> don't get it's the most difficult thing in the world and not because i don't know and not because um, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but it's more so I actually can't decide because Baker can do so much, Luke can do so much. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's it's impossible to say one is better than the other. Uh, yeah, I, I will because you have you have Pharrell, you have Timberland, you have Dr. Dre, you have these producers, and now you're gonna say who's better. You can't because the only thing you can you can actually say is who has more hits. 
That's what you can maybe weigh it up with, but you can't say who's better. I actually don't know. Okay, Luke has a plaque for, for Shekinah, yeah. So, so. Who are you guys talking about? Luke Elias or Baker? Oh, the producer. Yeah. So, wait, so, wait, 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 record this shit. Let me ask this question. Why, hey. <laughs> again, you guys are getting me again. <laughs> Um, so yeah, well, I mean, I would say in terms of numbers, like uh, who has a hit record, it's Luke. Um, um, but Baker also has a lot of records with a lot of people that are doing numbers, that are in South Africa doing massive numbers. Uh, Luke's mixing and mastering and production, I think is more on a pop and dance level on that side of things, whereas Baker will do better with hip hop, yeah. R&B, R&B um, Afro. Which one is your favorite though? Which, which one is my favorite? Which one of the producers is your favorite? <laughs> I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever one of them. So you could have said yourself, bro, because you produced your own beat as well. <laughs> Whichever one of them buy me or any. <laughs> Before we end the show, bro, um, Chase, it's been such a pleasure having you in the show, bro. It's Thank been a you, long man. time. You, and also free flow, right? Yeah. I know I didn't start this segment out here, but I just want to, like, you know, share the same frame of camera because it's like it's like a reunion happening out here. Yeah, Last yeah. Last time you were the other crew. Yeah. Last time, right? And now you're and Christopher. Thing, you know, doing amazing yes, things. Sir. You've grown so much. And I'm super you, bro. proud, bro, like how far you came, bro. You're doing amazing things. Bro. Putting I appreciate yourself that. on the map. We're working with Red Bull as well. Yeah. Jeez, bro, like... Yeah. What, 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 kind of, what kind of advice would you give for the next chase coming up, you know? The next chase coming yeah, up? Yeah, well, the next chase looking up to you to see some inspiration. He hasn't been born yet, but oh. he's going to come out of this set. Uh, <laughs> that's the next chase that I'm not joking. Um, <laughs> yo, I would say um, persistence. Mm. Don't, just don't stop. Doesn't matter. Persistence. Doesn't matter. Persistence. persistence. Not consistent. Consistency, yes. Yeah. But persistence, like mm. be an asshole. Be like in people's face the whole Seriously? time. Yeah. The whole time, bro. Like, don't don't let anybody knock you, bro. No one's gonna do it for you. Don't let anybody knock you. You must, no. you must move them. All of them. Shout out, bro. So, what can we expect for the future? So, what what are you gonna drop? Anything new? All right. What's, what's happening? Let's, let's 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 get into this. Yes. Um, last week, I dropped a record called "Like Me," uh, featuring Andre Graham. Today, I dropped uh, "Make Up Your Mind." Next week, I'm dropping. All For Me, a song called All For Me. The week after that, I'm dropping a song called Problems. Jeez. The week after that, I'm dropping a music video for Problems. <laughs> okay. Um, the week after that, I'm dropping a song called Speed Interlude, right? Then two weeks after that, I'm dropping a very big project that I really wanted to drop this winter. Mm. Um, and it's a song called This Is How I Feel. It's very, like, um, different to what I usually do. Um, it's alternative it's super sad emotional slow it's just a guitar mm. and me it's wow. very and i'm singing no <laughs> <laughs> no and i'm singing so it's very like and i'm gonna get uh, a whole lot of uh, different things involved there that's gonna be very good for this winter and then after that i'm dropping a big debut single like finally i, I don't have a debut single yet if anybody hey, i've noticed you haven't dropped any albums bro i i, I have i've dropped uh, projects like yeah. EPs or whatever, but I haven't dropped an album yet. No. So we we looking forward for that debut. Okay. I'm gonna drop it. Because we got some segments leading up to that. Big yeah. So I'm doing a long, a long, long like list of things. I have a I have a massive catalog that I want to get rid of. That's just sitting on my phone. A whole lot of songs that I just need to drop. So that's why I'm doing this now. Like a child prodigy, bro. Just yeah. can't help. Just make music. <laughs> you, wake can't up, help. you make music. You sleep. All you day. Music, all day. Know. All day. Yeah, Every day. All the love, bro. Uh, yeah. away. Thanks that's for amazing, that. Amazing, bro. Guys, Thanks. Chase. Shout out. It's been a pleasure. You Appreciate know, that. Man. I just want to see your trajectory come improving, and I can't wait, guys. You know, please check them out. Check in and support. You know, we need all the support as much, you know, because I mean, you're doing the most, you know, like the most. 
to have. Especially in the limited resources we have in the Cape Town industry, you're still, you're still pushing. Yeah. Like, being persistent. Persistent as possible. Yeah, you know. Yes, it's the vibes. With that being said, James, I'm signing out Crazy Kind and thank you to my previous host, Casino, for hosting the first segment. Shout out, peace. Yeah. Yeah. James, real fun. You're doing like this. Hey, you gon' get your dance on. Catch me, catch me, catch me, yeah. Drowning in ambition now. Turning all these tables now. Blip. Burning all these bridges down. Lit. Catch me, damn, damn, damn. Catch 